This is The Sisters Sing Soul, a program dedicated to showcasing the rare soul gems of the 60s and 70s as sung by the best of soul music's female artists. Hi, I'm Greg, and I'm looking forward to bringing you another episode of The Sisters Sing Soul. Episode 5 will feature the music of Denise LaSalle and Lorraine Ellison. Denise LaSalle, who is still recording and performing, is notable for her southern style of soul with an emphatic up-tempo groove. Lorraine Ellison, who sadly passed away in 1983 from ovarian cancer at the age of 51, was one of Northern Soul's most moving and deeply soulful artists. So, you'll be exposed to two singers who represent very different streams of soul music. But that said, what you'll hear from them is most definitely real soul, not the pop-oriented, sanitized stuff put out by, say, Motown. Now, I don't mean to put down Motown's music. It brilliantly accomplished its objective of selling millions and millions of records, sung and played by black artists and musicians, to a largely white audience. There were many fine singers at Motown, but they had to work within a tightly constrained commercial format. One does wonder what the likes of The Four Tops, The Temptations, Brenda Holloway, Kim Weston, not to mention the phenomenal bassist James Jamerson, might have accomplished if they had had the chance to really let loose. But I digress too much. Now on to two singers who hold nothing back. Denise LaSalle was born in 1939 or 1941 in rural Mississippi. We're not quite sure. Like the vast majority of great soul singers, she learned to sing in church. She moved to Chicago as a teenager, where she eventually recorded her first song, which was picked up and released by Chess Records in 1967. A Love Your Reputation became a modest hit in the Chicago area.
Over the next few years, Denise LaSalle honed her skills as a songwriter and ultimately ended up with Detroit-based Westbound Records, with whom she spent six productive years, releasing three albums and 12 singles, most of which made the R&B charts. Interestingly, her Westbound recordings were not made in Detroit, but at High Records recording studios in Memphis, Tennessee. In episode one of this series, we played Denise's biggest chart success, which went all the way to number one on the national R&B chart in 1971. Let's play Denise LaSalle's self-penned, trapped by a thing called love, one more time. In 1972, Westbound released another Denise LaSalle composition, A Man-Sized Job, which went on to hit number four on the R&B chart. Ever since my soul fan friend Bob and I first heard this stomper, well, it was well over a decade ago, we've been convinced that it would make the ideal opening song for Denise in some gritty nightclub. The lights come up, the band starts to play, and Denise hits the audience right between the eyes.
included on the subsequent album, On the Loose, which was released in 1973, is another fine slice of Denise's westbound work. Here is What It Takes to Get Another Good Woman. Upon the expiry of her contract with Westbound, Denise moved to ABC Records. Although she went on to record many, many more albums and singles, and continues to perform, as far as I know, right up to the present day, we're going to end our Denise LaSalle set with a track from her first album with ABC Records, Second Breath, which was recorded in Detroit and released in 1976. It's intriguing that I Get What I Want, written once again by Denise herself, has a pronounced Chicago sound which stands in contrast with the high records Memphis sound that can be heard on all her westbound releases. Here is Denise LaSalle with I Get What I Want.
going to play four selections from Lorraine Ellison, whose singing style provides an obvious contrast to that of Denise LaSalle. Northern versus Southern, Deep and Slow versus Driving and Up Tempo. Lorraine Ellison was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1931. As is so often the case, she grew up singing gospel music. She began her secular singing career in the early 1960s with Mercury Records, where things did not work out for her. She was then introduced to Jerry Ragavoy, a noted songwriter, arranger, and producer. Notably, he wrote Time is on My Side, recorded initially by Irma Thomas, and then more famously by the Rolling Stones, who turned it into a huge hit. But do yourself a favor and listen to the Irma Thomas stunning version. Jerry Ragavoy worked for Warner Brothers Records in their New York office and quickly signed Lorraine to a contract in 1966. In an intriguing twist of fate, Frank Sinatra had just canceled a studio session with a large orchestra, and since the musicians had to be paid anyway, there was an opportunity for another singer to record with them. Jerry Ragavoy was offered that opportunity, but with only a few days' notice. He decided to write three songs for the session for Lorraine Ellison. When the time came, she was ready. And she delivered one of the most emotionally powerful performances in soul music history. All it took was one magnificent take. Here is Lorraine Ellison's masterpiece, Stay With Me.
In 1969, Lorraine Ellison's second album for Warner Brothers was released. The album contains many fine soul songs written by Jerry Ragavoy, as well as a couple by Lorraine herself. From the album, Stay With Me, here is another intensely emotional song, You Don't Know Nothing About Love. Ever feel like dirt? 
Now here is yet another Jerry Ragavoy composition, recorded in New York in 1967, but not released at the time. It's impossible for me to understand how such a fine song was left on the shelf until it was finally released on a CD in 2006. Here is Lorraine Ellison with Haven't I Been Good to You. Lorraine Ellison's recording relationship with Jerry Ragavoy ended in 1970, but she continued to work for Warner Brothers with various producers in a variety of locations, including Muscle Shoals, Alabama. She recorded one last album for the label in Hollywood, California, entitled simply Lorraine Ellison. It was released in 1974 and contained our last selection of Lorraine Ellison's work. 
Fellow soul music fans Bob and Mendel and I had this song at the top of our all-time list of favorites for a long time. Here is Lorraine Ellison and The Road I Took to You. Please feel free to contact me with your observations and questions below. The next episode of The Sisters Sing Soul will feature the music of the phenomenal Candy Staten. Until then, I'm Greg for The Sisters Sing Soul, a program dedicated to showcasing the rare soul gems of the 60s and 70s as sung by the best of soul music's female artists. <laughs>